everybody. Welcome back to this week's episode of AMA Friday with Amy Miller recruiting in yoga pants. All right. So this is like take 712 or some shit <laughs> trying to get my thoughts together on uh, this week's video. So we did a poll on LinkedIn and I gave you all the choice of either why is my resume being rejected or personal branding. And so 70% of our voters, uh, which we got over 400 votes, which was pretty good for a 24 hour poll, I feel like. <laughs> um, but overwhelmingly, like 70% y'all wanted to hear why is my resume being rejected? So, um, well, let's give it a shot, shall we? <laughs> I don't know, this, this isn't gonna make me any friends, I feel like. All right, so I wanna ground us first of all in who is actually doing the review. There's a lot of moving parts behind the scenes that I know y'all aren't necessarily privy to. Like, it would be wonderful if I could just pull up my ATS and just show you, but I can't because that would violate all kinds of privacy rules and probably get me fired. And let's not do that because this channel is not monetized and I got to pay my bills, okay? So, but I will do my best to try to give you as much insight as possible, as well as leave you with a specific action you can take to get help from me on how to optimize for this resume review nonsense. All right, so first and foremost, let's ground ourselves in who is actually reviewing the resume anyway. I have been asked, you know, is there a bot? Is it, it like it's a robot? It's an algorithm? It's, you know, it, it's, I mean, the, the things that people think are happening inside recruiting is so wild. You know, it's like hearing a rumor about yourself and you're just like, oh, really? What did I do next? <laughs> because it's so unbelievable. It's like, that's really what you guys think happens? That's so wild. So I'm not sure where all of this started, especially the bot stuff, because I've yet to find one. I've asked. I like, show me the algorithm. Show me on the ATS where the recruiter hurt you because I don't get it. If you want to be mad at somebody, be mad at the recruiter because that is the person that is reviewing your resume. So let's dig into that, shall we? Okay. Most companies have a recruiter or sourcer or someone in the industry, someone that, that is part of the recruiting team that is reviewing the resumes. Now, we don't just bring in a brand new intern with no experience and set them off and have them, you know, wield this power of hitting reject. We don't do that. You need to be trained against the job description. You need to know what you're looking for. You need to understand OFCCP compliance. You need to understand the guidelines of your particular company, your role, your team, the expectations. This is something we take very seriously. Companies get audited by the government on how we're doing for compliance and being fair and reviewing all the resumes through the same lens. Okay, so so please understand, this is no joke. This is why I get so nervous about resume reviews and talking to my sourcers and talking to my uh, recruiters about this because I know how serious this is. We cannot screw up, okay? So understand that's 100%. The person that is doing it is typically a recruiter or sourcer who has been carefully trained and made sure that they're hopefully well calibrated against the search, whatever it is they're looking for. All right, so why do people get rejected? So I actually, uh, just myself, uh, in about the last couple weeks or so, was looking at all of the applications for one of my roles. I didn't have a sourcer aligned to this one, so it was all on me. And so I try to go in every day, chuck that bucket, clean it up. But I noticed something interesting as I was doing this, because normally I have a sourcer who manages this for most of my roles, but this was a good, this was good timing that I got to do this so I could bring this back to you guys. More than half of the people that I rejected did not fit the basic qualifications, like full stop. Now I'm sure I could call them and tell them that and they would argue with me because I've, I've had this conversation before. Okay, let me tell you a story all the way back in my work source days 
where I was talking to a gentleman who'd come into the office. This is when I was an employment counselor with the state of Washington. And he came into the office and he was very upset because he'd been applying to a bunch of roles, like hundreds of roles, and no one was calling him. He was super pissed. And I said, okay, let me look at your resume. Okay, great. So you've been in the industry for like 20 years and you've been a dishwasher and a cook and, uh, and you know, short order guy and a bus boy. And, and you, you've held all of these like food service, hospitality type roles. So, wow, weird. You're not getting calls. What kind of roles are you playing to? He said, well, I want to be a forklift driver. Okay. So you're applying to forklift driver jobs with this resume. And he said, yeah. And I said, have you driven a forklift? <laughs> That's a fair question, right? Cause it's not on the resume. He loses his shit, starts screaming at me. And you know, he's been a forklift driver for 20 years and he has all these certifications. I, maybe he had two jobs or I don't know. All I can tell you is what was on the resume didn't have shit to do with driving a forklift, okay? <laughs> and so I was trying to explain to him, you know, like I, I get it, you you have this expertise, you have this experience, you have these certifications, you know, he's pulling his card out of his wallet and trying to show it to me. That's wonderful, but it's not on your resume. Y'all, I cannot express this to you loudly enough or often enough. I can only work with the information that you are giving me. So if, like my forklift driving friend from 10 years ago, who I'm still scarred by that conversation with, you have expertise that qualifies you for a role, please make sure it's on your resume. I, I, I only can work with what you tell me, okay? So that's number one, and that is honestly the biggest reason people are rejected because there is no proof on the resume and the information that I have to work with that you meet the qualifications for the role. Far and away, number one. The second reason people do not get moved forward. So this is not necessarily a rejection. This is how people end up in a maybe pile and sometimes don't get out. Okay, we may find that this person, based on where they're at, based on some previous work history, based on maybe a certification or a keyword or two, there could be indicators that this might be a fit. We may not have enough information to know for sure. We, we may not see Maybe there's a question about years of experience, like, okay, did you have that title the whole time you were at this company? Or did you start out as something else, which may or may not count? You know, I mean, there's all questions like that, right? And so those people go into what I call the maybe pile, which is, you know, if I don't have anybody else, this is probably somebody I need to call. I, I need to at least ask some questions and try to fill in the gaps and see if there is indeed a fit here, okay? That's okay. I, I don't mind making those calls. My job is to look at resumes, talk to candidates, help them navigate the process, get to an offer, make the offer, close the deal. I get it. That's a big, it's one part of my job, but it is a big important part at the very beginning of my job. Okay. So let's, let's be clear on that. Th this is not time that's not well spent for me. I should be doing this. Here's the caveat. If I have this maybe pile and I've got, say, out of 100 resumes, half of them aren't a fit because of basic qualifications, I've got another third that I'm just not sure. I mean, maybe and, and there's probably some context I'm missing and this might be good, but I don't know for sure. I'm going to set them to the side. But then what happens with the other third? Those are the ones that are clear yeses. The last time I did this, so just recently, this pile that I went through, more than half, something like 47 out of 80, were just not a fit. That like, it, based on the information I had, not a fit, reject, a lot of junior people applying to a senior level role, things like that, I blame OFCCP, okay? Another 20 
were like fantastic. Like clearly, like it was an embarrassment of riches. I had so many great candidates who clearly fit the requirements. I sent them all. I mean, I was like telling the hiring manager like, hey, I don't know how we won the applicant lottery here, <laughs> but here we are, you know, it was a nice big crop for us to look at. That left a good number, double digit number, that I just didn't have enough information. So I was lacking context and frankly, having 20 people that were such a great spot on match made a big difference. And I'm going to focus my time, effort, and energy there first before I have to go back to the Navy pile. It doesn't mean I won't, it doesn't mean I won't need to talk to those people, but I have to make difficult decisions based on the information that you are providing me and based on the 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 expectations of the manager and what we have to work with. So I sometimes have to make those tough calls where that maybe pile might have to wait a bit until we get through the ones that are that are clear yeses. So you may be thinking that's really unfair, but um again, I'm here to give you real world like this is how it happens. This is actually what I do every day at this desk. Okay? I don't make this up. This is the unvarnished truth. So, how do we solve that for you? This is this is the this is the good part. Okay? This is where hopefully I redeem myself a little bit <laughs> if you're mad at me right now. You may be wondering how can I make sure that my resume proves I fit basic qualifications. I'm so glad you asked. Here's what I want you to do. Send me an email, amy at recruitinginyogapants.com. I want you to put BQ check in the subject line. B as in basic, Q as in qualifications, check. You are going to get an auto response that is going to have very specific instructions on what I want you to do next. We will then take that opportunity to do a little one-on-one -on -one coaching. I will look at your resume. I will look at the role you're applying to or interested in, and we will discuss how to make sure that your resume is optimized for the audience, which is a real person. It is not a robot. All right. So amy at recruitinginyogapants.com, BQ check. I am not going to cap this. But please understand, depending on volume, it might take me a few days to get back to you. I will do my best to respond to everyone who requests it and follows instructions. So we will see you soon. Hopefully this helps. Send a comment, send an email. We'll talk more about it. And we'll see you next week for personal branding. Mm -hmm.